Hey guys, and welcome to Teal House Farm. Today we're gonna to do some dehydrating to make some tea blends. And I just wanna show you some real easy ways that you can use what might already be on your property, just to give you some ideas for making uh, herbal tea blends um, without really having to spend any money, just by foraging. Now, I'll show you what we have on our property. And I'll also give you some ideas of things that you can look for that might be on your property. Obviously, this is really region, regionally specific. Um, and I, most states, if you're in the United States, have a uh, conservation department, which will have a free foraging guide. And that's a great way to get started, to get ideas of what you can look for in your area. But I'll show you what's available in our area. And I'll give you some kind of tips and tricks on just what to look for. So this is obviously late summer. Typically the best time to be doing this is in the spring, but it's possible to do it basically anytime things are green. The reason that spring is when people usually do it is because there's a lot of new growth and new growth is the best quality for most plants, the best quality leaves for making tea. But you can make tea out of old growth as long as it's you know good and healthy leaves and we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, but today um, I foraged four things and then we're going to go outside and see if we can find one more together that I kind of ran out of time looking for yesterday. Um, but I did want to give you an idea real quick. My friend Adrian made this for me. This is actually a tea blend that she grew herself. So if you are interested in growing some things for tea, she grew some things that are real simple to grow basically anywhere in the United States. As long as you have um, like four months of a growing season, you can grow any of these. And this really is quite a delicious little blend that she made. Um, it's catnip, chamomile, which is a flower, um, a regular, just plain old like mint plant, which be careful with those in your raised beds because they are so hard to get rid of once you put in there, but they do make a great tea. Some elderflower, which we have here on our property and in most of the United States it grows um, wild. Bee balm, lemon balm, chicory flower, and some stevia leaves to give it a little bit of sweetness. But basically, she did what we're going to do today. She gathered all these things from her herb bed, then dried them and broke into small pieces, and then it can be put in tea bags. Um, when you dehydrate, you have a couple options. You can do a loose leaf tea that you just put in like a tea, can't think of the right word right now, like a tea sieve. sieve. Um, but there's a technical word for it, but you basically, it's stainless steel and you put the tea in and you pour the hot water over it. Um, in America, we're a little more fans of the tea bag. It's how we tend to like things. So I've just got these off of Amazon. These are, I got like three packs of these in one order. They're really cheap. They're hundred percent compostable. And the reason I specifically like these, not only that they're compostable, which is nice, but they have a cute little drawstring. So they're easy to load, but unlike other tea bags that have a flap and you hold, fold it over and hope your tea doesn't spill into your cup, this one you actually pull and it cinches it closed so you don't have to worry about your tea bag flopping over and dumping all of your leaves into your cup of tea. So I'll link these below if that's something that interests you. And I do prefer my tea in bags. Usually I do what Adrian did right here. I'll make a blend that I like and I'll keep it loose and then anytime I want a cup, I fill up a bag. You obviously could pre-fill all of your bags and keep them in a jar as well. It just depends when you want to do the work. So where did we forage here for our drying today? And then I'll show you how I dry them. It's really simple. Um, so I did four different things. The first one is crab apple leaves and actual crab apples. So I got a whole bucket of them. So crab apples are teeny tiny. Some varieties are larger than this. These are tiny. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dehydrate both the leaves and I'm going to chop up the crab apples probably into little halves dehydrate them together and then crumble that together and be a crab apple blend to be added to other teas but I think the combination of the leaves and the fruit will give it a better flavor because I don't feel like the leaves have very good flavor in general so and then uh, one that works really well is blackberry so I cut off a bunch of blackberry leaves um, I have fermented blackberries leaves before for tea making I will link that video below it helps intensify the flavor. Today we are just going to dehydrate the leaves without fermenting. So I'll link the video below though if you want to try fermenting. One I've done before too. We have mulberry leaves from a black mulberry tree. Um, white mulberry uh, trees are also really popular for tea making. They are supposed to have a lot of um, healing properties. I can't think of exactly what they're full of, but lots of good things said about white mulberry. If that is something that you have on your property, we don't. We only have the uh, real dark, the purpley black mulberries. And then the last thing was our apple tree. So I got some apple leaves off the tree 
And then we're actually even going to dehydrate one of our poor little misshapen apples from our apple tree, which isn't it's just kind of an ugly little fella. We're going to give him a good wash, slice real thin. Then I'm going to dehydrate him with the apple leaves and then make an apple leaf, apple crumble mix. Um, the fruit teas like the apple do really, really well if you, well, by themselves, but I like to add maybe some white tea um, to them as well to give them a little bit more flavor and oomph. And for now, I just order the loose leaf tea to blend in the white tea or green tea, whatever I'm wanting to add because we're not growing anything here specifically for tea making. That is a goal for next year. I'd like to have an herb bed with just tea flowers that we can add with our naturally foraged teas. But for this year and for years previous, I just buy what I can't find because I, I don't want to put the energy into growing quite yet. Because as you know, we've been rebuilding our vegetable garden and our greenhouse and all of those things and really getting those set up. So that's where our attention has been. Let's get all of this ready to go in the dehydrator and then we will go outside and I want to see um, if we can find some wild elderberries. I would like to dehydrate those. I know we have them on our property. This year though was a really bad year for any kind of berry because we had a super dry spring. It just did not rain at all. So our our blackberries and our mulberries, they just were really bitter and not good. So we didn't end up harvesting any of those for eating. But elderberries are ready about this time of year. And since they're a later uh, berry, I'm wondering if since summer was a little nicer as far as the rain went, if the elderberries have fared a little better and maybe there'll be some that we can harvest and dehydrate for teas. Obviously, you can also harvest them and make elderberry syrup, which we do. And I can link that video below. But I want to see if there's any we can get for uh, blending in with our teas. Elderberry has a really nice flavor and I feel like some dehydrated elderberries would give a great um, immune system boost and a great flavor to maybe our mulberry or our apple blend. So we'll go see what we can find. But let's get everything ready to go on the dehydrator. property where elderberry grows wild um, and the first two were kind of didn't really have anything so we're gonna go look at this last location but this, this may not be the year for berries because like I said super dry spring but let's take a look so these are all wild elderberries and it's kind of the same thing I saw in the other places something's already come through the birds have already enjoyed these and you can tell by the quality of the berry they look kind of shriveled it just wasn't a good year but that's okay because we did quite literally nothing but come out and look at them. Um, you can put nets over them in the spring to keep the birds off and things. And usually we have enough that we kind of share with the wildlife and we're able to get berries. But like I said, it's just a bad, bad weather year. One thing I did want to mention, so we already talked about you want to look for new growth. So you want young leaves. Also make sure you look and um, double check that the leaves and the berries of whatever plant that you're picking are both edible. In the case of the elderberry, the, the leaves are not safe for eating, but the berries are okay to put in your tea. For the crab apple and the apple, you want to make sure you get the seeds out and the stems off the apples. The leaves are okay in small quantities and obviously the apples themselves are fine. So just make sure you do a little bit of research before you just start plucking. You don't want to make yourself sick. 
obviously in these teas it's going to be such a small quantity even if you do mess up probably won't feel it but always be safe and do your research again the conservation department in your area is a great place for free information and usually free field guides as well some conservation departments even have free foraging classes which is really neat so thanks so much for watching guys um, we will catch you next time